Thank you, Victor, for the kind introduction. Um, so as he said, I am Paola Moreno Roman, and today I'll talk about an organization that's very dear to my heart and I've, I've been working with for quite a few years, that's called REPU. But first I wanna start by um, asking you all a question. Do you know a Peruvian scientist? Have you talked to a Peruvian scientist? Raise your hand, please. Okay, that's great. Uh, because um, for the ones who didn't raise your hands, um, I'm gonna introduce you to a Peruvian scientist, and that is me. Yay. So I'm just gonna do this. So I was born and raised in Lima, Peru. That was me when I was four. And in um, 2007, I started uh, college at Universidad Peruana Cayetano Heredia. I majored in biology. And since I started um, college, I was really interested in research. And I, so I started doing research as an undergrad. And in 2010 was the first time I heard about a program called REPU. I didn't know much about it. All I had heard that it was uh, a program for Peruvian undergrads that facilitated research internships abroad. So I was like, okay, cool, I'm definitely gonna apply. Um, but that year, a lot of things were happening in my personal life. So my mind was all over the place, and I forgot to apply. Um, but as the saying goes, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. And that's what I did. <laughs> you can also make ceviche, that's true. So that summer, and this is Southern Hemisphere summer, so it's January through March of 2011, I ended up staying in Peru, uh, continued doing research, and the research, uh, the data that I generated ended up getting published in a paper, which was great. And uh, that same year, during winter, I ended up applying to REPU. I got accepted. And I, um, the next summer, 2012, I went to Yale University for a research internship, and I was there for three months. And this is a picture of um, some of my lab mates celebrating my birthday, and there's the cake there. Um, that was a really great experience, because for the first time, I could experience how, even though I had been involved in research projects, for the first time I could experience how research was abroad and at super um, amazing university such as Yale. And in that moment, I knew that if I wanted to become a better scientist, I couldn't stay back home. Like that was, I, I needed to get better training and I needed to go abroad. So when I went back home to Lima, I decided to apply to doctorate programs. And I started in 2013 um, a PhD program in cellular and molecular biology at Stanford University. And I know some, some of you have visited the university. If you haven't, it's not that far. Please go, it's, it's beautiful and um, it's just great, so please. You are all invited. And another milestone in my life was two months ago that I finished grad school. And that's, <laughs> and that's a picture of my family, my parents and my family, uh, some of my uncles and aunts that came for my defense and um, dissertation and graduation. And yeah. So I shared with you my, well, very briefly, my personal story on how the REPO program heavily impacted in a positive way in my life. And just like my story, there are many more about how this program has positively impacted the life of many Peruvian undergrads. And in the next a few minutes, I'm gonna talk to you about this program. That's called Research Experience for Peruvian Undergrads. How it all started as just one idea and it became into a very successful program. So what sparked this idea? We all know that our best is not the best. And here I'm talking specifically um, about scientific research. So this is actually recent data from 2018 on citable documents. And as you can see, Peru is 71st um, worldwide. Um, but if we just focus on Latin American countries, we are seventh. So we are not doing incredibly bad, but we can always do better. So in 2008, um, Abel Arcaza Roman, who back then was a grad student at Vanderbilt, um, you know, learned about this data and he started bouncing off ideas with um, his friends on how could he support the Peruvian community, specifically Peruvian undergrads on their training. 
And he was like, okay, you know, a really good way to do that is by um, ensuring that they have research experience. So when a Peruvian undergrad studying at a university in Peru decides to go um, apply to a program abroad, then they'll have research experience, they'll have more connections, letters of recommendation, and so on, and the likelihood of them being accepted will be higher. So he started a program that um, is called REPU. So what is REPU? REPU is a program that's organized by Peruvian grad students, postdocs, and now alumni, uh, that are located at different universities in the US, Canada, and Europe. We all share a similar interest, which is the development of science, technology, engineering, mathemat and mathematics in Peru. I want to emphasize also that REPU is a volunteer-run program. We all are volunteers. Um, this is something we all do in our extra time. You can see here um, some of the universities um, where our members of our REPU community um, attend. We aim uh, to do three things. To increase the number of highly trained Peruvian scientists in a sustainable way, to establish a community of scientists that includes scientists from early training, and we're talking here about the undergrad community, and to build awareness about the need to support science in Peru and generate a nucleate inside for new projects. How do we do it? Um, one, uh, one way is uh, what I already mentioned, the Rep REPU internship, and this is, uh, 12-week hands-on experience in five different branches. So right now we have five different branch, uh, branches, biology, ecology, chemistry, physics, and nanotechnology. We also organize events for our uh, repu mentees uh, so they can develop different skills, such as their analytical skills, through journal clubs, research in progress talks, and seminars. And I didn't include this here, but we'll be organizing our repu seminar next year in Boston uh, towards the end of, of March, um, more likely, so please, um, I'll keep you all posted about this. We also provide uh, mentor-mentee guidance and guidance when they decide to apply to grad school and internships in other institutions. We make the international scientific community aware of our efforts through articles, uh, published and also interviews and also within our own community in Peru. And here you can see a few pictures of interviews done by RPP. We also maintain a strong online presence um, in Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, so please I invite you all to follow us online. And we encourage new initiatives by connecting scientists. Um, these are just a few um, of the initiative, initiatives uh, in Peru that were either started or by REPO alumni or that were, uh, or were REPO alumni are in, are in leadership positions. So now I want to show you um, a bit of the data that be, we've been accumulated in the past 11 years that this program has been running. As I mentioned at the beginning, it started in 2008 um, and we just had one student, and we only had one branch, the biology branch. And that continued, and you can see how slowly throughout the years the number of students increased. And now we have, as I said, five branches and um, 14 students. And we have, I believe it's 16, we already selected the REPU 2020 mentees, and I believe we have 15 to 17 Peruvian undergrads that will be traveling abroad for the research internships. So far, we have uh, trained uh, 85 Peruvian undergrads. I'm very happy to tell you that 38 out of those 85 applied to graduate programs abroad, and all of them were accepted. Um, because now it's been 11 years, right? A lot of them have already started graduating, so we have seven REPO alumni that already have a doctorate degree, and right now they're pursuing careers in acad academia and industry. This is uh, a bit more um, of the data, because I know we all love data. Um, and we've been talking a lot about gender, right? So uh, out of those 85 trained students, 43% are male and, uh, sorry, 43% are female and 57% are male. Um, but it's, it's very equal, which uh, it's something um, we really like about the program, because as we know, there's talent everywhere. 
We have more than 100, 100 people in our network, and they um, serve as mentors. And, and that's another really important thing of community that, you know, as, as, as someone mentioned earlier, it's such a core value in our culture, community. And we are mentors um, for each other. We mentor each other, and that's really important. I mentioned this already, five scientific branches, uh, 11 Peruvian universities, and we have seven host countries. Um, but when we were analyzing the data, one thing that stood out when we were looking at where are all our um, selected students for the program were coming from, something that became clear was that all of them were coming from universities in Lima. And we know that's a big issue in our country because it's very centralized in Lima. If you are not in Lima, it just gets harder to have access to some opportunities. So in 2017, Andres Guillén and Renzo Gutierrez, who were, uh, repu, who were repu mentees in 2014 and 15, respectively, started a branch of repu that's called Rep Repuatics. And the goal of this branch is uh, to train undergraduate students from diverse regions of Peru through an internship in the best research institutes in Peru. And this is um, one example. This, he was the first, uh, first Repuatics, Richard Zapata, who was from Universidad Nacional Pedro Ruiz Gallo, who did his internship at Cayetano Heredia and is currently um, pursuing a master's in biomedical research in Spain. I'm also really happy to tell you that this year, 2019, we had for the first time um, a student who also came from Universidad Nacional Pedro Ruiz Gallo who got accepted for the Repu Biology, Biology branch, and she did her research internship in the US. So we are really happy with the results we've gotten so far and how um, the program is growing. So now, how can you help? Well, we recently launched a GoFundMe campaign, and I invite you all to check, uh, check that out and hopefully make a donation. Because as I mentioned, this is a volunteer-run um, run initiative. And on the side, we can't, because we are not making any money, we can't provide a stipend to the students. So of, of course, we help them applying. Um, to, we help them to get funding from their own universities and also from Concitec. But that can be uh, pretty hard sometimes. So as we were launching this campaign, hopefully to get money to help them with housing, et cetera. Another way that you can help us and get involved if you're interested is by talking to the REPO members. And here, um, these are uh, the four REPO members that are here at this conference, and you probably met some of them already, um, besides me, Ricardo, Claudia, and Alessandro. And I invite you all uh, to please, if you have any suggestions or comments, or how would you like, um, if you would like to get involved with these or um, collaborate on some projects, just to come talk to us. Um, or you can also shoot us an email and we'll be more happy, I mean, we'll reply um, very soon and we'll be more happy to connect with all of you. And yeah, and with that, um, thank you for your attention and thank you, Victor, for the introduction again. Thank you.